my name is Cassandra Lauren Gordon. I'm the host of the Black Creative Handbook podcast. And I am here with... Leslie Bailey, FGA. Oh, <laughs> oops, I just interrupted you, but I can only see your eyes just for the visual oh. listeners. Okay, great. We need to see Sorry. the whole face. We need to see the whole of you. And if you are listening by audio, we're just going to give you all the description. We can see her face now. Crystal clear. Perfect. So can you say it again? So I am here with... Leslie Bailey, FGA. Great. Okay, what does FGA mean? I get confused with all this gemologist kind of stuff and GIA, this and this, and graduate GG and all that. So um, just for the listeners out there, um, Leslie is a gemologist, the science of gemstones, right? Or does, does this, is, am, I, am I right? Is that what a gemologist do? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah the science of gemstones, the, the law, the stories, all of that, everything. Anything about gemstones, that's what we do. Okay. So now explain with all these lovely letters after your name. <laughs> so um, when you complete your diploma in gemological sciences from the Gemological Association of Great Britain, you become a fellow of that institution. So that's basically all it is. It's just like a fellowship of the Gemological Association. Um, and I think with the GIA, the GG is like graduate gemologist and then... Um, I've also got an AJP, which is like accredited jewelry professional, which just means that you know about the like the basics of jewelry and like how how would you get that? Oh <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Oh uh, well, um, I actually got it in lockdown because I was part of this women in jewelry network. It doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately, but they sent out um, this group message saying that the GIA was offering free courses and obviously I had nothing to do in lockdown so I was like I might as well and they were offering a series of courses that if you did it all together you would get this um certificate so I thought you know what I'll just sign up save myself like 270 dollars and just do it for free and it basically was just like a good run through of jewelry different types of jewelry different like uh, teaching different terminology for stuff um the just the process of like jewelry making like very basic um then different types of jewelry from different eras like common uses of gemstones and metals and different types of jewelry so yeah like caring for stuff just the basics that most jewelers will probably know anyway but because I'm not a jeweler <laughs> I just know about the stone so I was like let me just do this real quick um but yeah that's it but like usually you have to pay for it um I just took advantage of some free stuff in lockdown <laughs> why not be creative take why advantage not? up up skill be yeah why not why this is not? it I was like well some sat at home doing nothing I might as well come out of the first lockdown with something to show for it because everyone else came up like six packs and I was like nah <laughs> I'm not doing that but you got yourself with lots of knowledge gem knowledge and jewelry exactly. knowledge which is really cool exactly I've got like <laughs> works out my brain instead of my body <laughs> mind over matter mind over body exactly. so here we are talking about um today about your profession the science of gemstones and you're working in the UK from um in the jewelry industry I'm just going to read your bio out so Leslie Bailey is a Bermudian gemologist based in Hatton Garden. Hatton Garden is the jewelry quarter in London. Leslie has called for black jewelers to join a platform that promotes black businesses called The List. In just over a year, she's grown the list to 375 jewelers from all over the world. Leslie states, as a black woman working as a gemologist in London, I absolutely love my job, but I have not had the smoothest entries into the trade. I wish I could channel these native experiences and to change in that the industry desperately needs. I'm more than happy to do so if it prevents people from myself from having repeat experiences. So before we get into the list, let's, you know, on this Black Creative um, Handbook podcast, we'd like to get to know the person before we get into the deep stuff so we agree with you. <laughs> yeah the deep stuff so what I would like to ask you what advice would you give yourself at 14 years old um well at 14 
I was like moving to this country <laughs> um, and things worked out pretty well. So I feel like at 14, I was probably like very apprehensive about like what's gonna happen, that I'm very worried, like basic 14 year old problems, like, am I gonna have friends? Like, <laughs> where will I go shopping? Probably just tell myself, you know, apply yourself, like don't doubt yourself. Um, and it'll be fine. Like, it's going to be fine. You're going to have a good time. But, like, just definitely don't doubt yourself. Don't think that you can't do anything because that's literally what I learned when I came here. I was like, oh, actually, I can do lots of different stuff that I didn't think, even think of, you know. Mm. It just how I ended up becoming a gemologist. But, um, yeah. Okay, that's very it. interesting. So you said you came from somewhere. So where did you come from I know that's a loaded question but here we go <laughs> now as you said um, I'm Bermudian so I grew up in Bermuda um lived there where is that just in case for the people out it's not the Bermuda Triangle guys if anyone messages me asking about Bermuda Triangle <laughs> um but no it's kind of near it's kind of near America it's kind of like if you go to like North Carolina just draw a line like east then in the middle of the ocean there's Bermuda but you can't see it on a map you have to like zoom in loads so um but it's literally just a really really small island in the middle of the ocean uh but it's, it's a nice island like can't lie it's very nice very pretty um but yeah I grew up there uh then my mum decided that she wanted to get another degree and came to the UK um and then my parents were like actually you know, education is free <laughs> in the UK and it's just as good, so you might as well just like move over. And then, yeah, now I'm here, <laughs> still here. Just, just here, just, you know, chilling on your long awaited holiday for X amount of years. Okay, I hear you. <laughs> nah, <laughs> when, when you grow up, when you grow up in the holiday, is is anything, a bit of cold is quite nice, you know. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. From Bermuda oh. to here, and you like the cold. Okay, me and you from different. I want to go to the hot place. I forget uh, this. I can't. That's the one thing about me. All my friends know that I do not do heat. I do not like the heat. I like the sun, but don't like the heat. <laughs> so what's so what's the difference then? So like, say I don't know if you were. I got sunburnt in Scotland. Like it was sunny, but it just wasn't hot. You know. I think that's low key because I was like up high on like a mountain, but it was sunny, but it wasn't hot. It was nice and cool. Like it was great. It's good vibes. Okay. I'm still trying to understand the heat. Is it because of the sweat or the hu humidity? Is that what you don't like? Everything, or? everything. Like Bermuda is really humid. It's not even that hot, like maybe 25, 27, right? So it's not even super, super hot. But the humidity is always around like 80, whether it's hot or not. So 80 in, what? Sorry. 80%, like 80% okay. humidity. Um, so like say if you have natural hair and you did like a really nice blowout as soon as you leave the house, it's over. It's 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 gone, it's shrunk, it's gone. So things like that, it's just like really annoying. Um, I also like my body just does not do well in heat. I just get really annoyed, I just get really bothered. Whereas if it's like a nice temperate climate that's dry, no humidity, I'm living. <laughs> okay, thank you for breaking I'm down. Living. Breaking, okay, breaking down. I just had to clarify that because um, you know we always think like Bermuda, the island, is a great place to be and hug destination. Okay, cool. So now I want to talk about how you got into the jewelry industry. How did that happen? Um. So when I came over here we had uh, work experience and I set it up really late as per, like as everyone does. Um, and the only place that would take me was like this jewelers in uh, Colston. So I went Where, and sorry? in Colston, it's like South, I want to say Southeast London, I think. I think it's Southeast. But anyway, sorry, I don't know. It. It's, it's somewhere, it's somewhere in this Surrey-ish. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I went there. But because I set it up so late and so last minute, they didn't really know kind of what to do. So they did like health and safety, da da. And then the guy who owned it, the jeweler, he just said, "Have you ever held a diamond before?" And I was like, "No." And he just put a diamond in my hand, and I was like, 
that's nuts. <laughs> like it was just so pretty and just so sparkly and just like really nice. And like I'd had an interest in jewelry before and like been to some jewelry making classes and stuff. And although I enjoyed it, I'm just like wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do like as a job um but just kind of enjoyed it as a hobby so then when I went there they had a this girl who was training to become a gemologist and they were like all right just go with her for the day because they didn't have anything else for me to do so I'll just go with her up to London for the day so we went to Hatton Garden it was the first time I ever been to Hatton Garden um and she took me to Gemme where I ended up studying and kind of like showed me what she was like studying and we went to Holtz, like it does, it's not there anymore, but Holtz used to have this like huge like showcase of like gemstones. And we went there and then they also gave her like some like cash. It was like, go buy some sapphires or go buy this or like that. And I'm like, wow, like we're really like go to the bank, go. We did all the Hatton Garden runs and bought loads of stuff, dropped off loads of stuff, looked at loads of sparkly things. And I was like, this is a great job. <laughs> like, <laughs> This is a great job. People just give you money and then you go buy diamonds and you come back and then you play with them for a bit and go home. And I was like, I'm down for that. Wow. Sounds like a spark like a sparkling job. Okay, that's how yeah. you did it. So how do you get onto your degree? Because these gemologist degrees are not for the faint-hearted. No. Um, so I wanted to go to uni, right? But you can't do a gemology course at uni in the UK um and so I ended up doing geology because in my head I was like it sounds the same it's about rocks diamonds and rocks whatever but then I kind of like bit off more than I could chew because it was definitely more like maths and physics and that's like my worst subjects but I think going to uni and doing geology gave me all of like the core kind of techniques and principles and I had you have like the right mindset to just specialize in like a particular type of like minerals because like gemology is basically a more like I don't know I guess salesy version of like mineralogy which is a subset of geology so it's kind of similar principles similar stuff so for me like when I did the um gem a course I didn't find the actual practical side of it too 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 hard Um, because I was already kind of did three years of it so I was really lucky in that sense but like I know lots of people who did like English at uni and had to like start learning how to read like crystallographic axes and stuff like that and they were like what the hell Um, so yeah I I just kind of locked out I kind of thought you know what I'm just gonna go to uni for the experience but it actually genuinely did help me (laughs) later on in life um but yeah, so it it was hard, like the foundation level I found quite, it was, it was quite easy. Um, but the diploma level is when like it really ramps up and you have to just really know what you're talking about. Um, the theory papers, like there's the days when they have the exams, there are people in the park next to the ultimate center being like, this is my third time doing this exam. <laughs> like it's proper daunting, like, even I, I had to retake the exam and I was just like, right. And I never had to retake an exam, even when I was at uni. So like, it's actually very hard, like the theory side of it. Um, so you do have to know what you're talking about. You just gotta, but it, it helps, you know, like, cause now I'm a gemologist and I actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. So it's worth it. it it's worth the uh, difficulty. So I have to ask you this question that you probably get asked all the time. What's your favourite stone and why? I mean, that's like asking someone who their favourite like child is. Or, like, they do have one though. Who their favourite cat is. Yeah, we all have favourite one, but it changes all the time. Um, like I really used to not like diamonds. I really didn't like diamonds before. I was like... Why are you so against diamonds? The ethical sides, the, those reasons or what? Like, no, I just thought like from because I was coming from like a sciencey background, to me, like a diamond is just like carbon. Like it's just one thing. Whereas like when you go to the color gemstones, you have all these different processes and all these different chemicals that in different sequences and orders of events and concentrations produce so many different things. So like scientifically the colored stones are more interesting. Um 
and then I did the FGA because that's mainly about coloured stones like rubies, sapphires, emeralds, all that stuff, right? And then the DGA is more about diamonds. It's like actually all about diamonds. Um, so I already had more of a kind of interest in the coloured stones. But then it wasn't until I got my first job where I actually had to like work with diamonds. That I actually got like an appreciation for them. Um, so like, I don't know, it's, it's hard. I'd say favorite stone uh in general would be maybe tourmaline wow just because you get so many different types you get so many different colors you get so many they come big and clean <laughs> so you can get some nice crystals even like the raw tourmaline crystals are really pretty you get the bi colors you get your teals the paribas are like know, amazing what's, what's the pariba pariba, pariba tourmaline is like this uh almost like fluorescent uh bluey green it's like it's a crazy color like you it's a color you wouldn't think it would exist in nature like it's crazy color and it's almost like glowy it's like super super rich in color but it only comes from brazil like they found similar colored stones but the ones from brazil are like incredible oh. to the point where like when you see one you know like you're looking at something like special even though tourmaline is meant to be like semi-precious but those are like wow they're amazing so yeah it, I think tourmaline is like the best kind of all-round you know go to like if you want something in a particular color you can get with tourmaline but if I'm going to be like super 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 bougie mm -hmm. I'm going to go for a pink diamond you know <laughs> wow why because how rare it is or no nah, they're just amazing like pink or lilac like lilac diamonds they look like just crushed lavender ice it's beautiful okay yeah. so i have to ask you as a gemologist how creative are you in your field like how creative can you get with with gemstones and working with with gemstones um well for me i'm like just i think you have to be creative in your kind of thought processes especially when it comes to um identifying gemstones so like part of it is kind of you get a gemstone and you don't know what it is you have all these like different tests that you can do but you also have to think about are people being very creative and trying to get something that's not exactly what it's meant to be in there is this treated you have to kind of be Think, have like a bit of a crafty mind so that takes a bit of creative. So you're like a anyway. detective, a creative detective trying to figure out yeah. the properties of this gemstones and make sure if it's worth something or if it's not. Or... Well, even like this week, um, we had a ring come in and there was meant to be three sapphire, three oval sapphires, blue sapphires. And one of the stones is missing because the setter had like exploded it when he was doing whatever he was doing to it. Um, but then all the little shards of the stone didn't look right like they didn't look like the other sapphires and it was almost like they were purple and also blue at the same time so my boss was like can you just like have a look at it see what you think it is and it was something that like I never thought I'd see outside of gem a like studying it was a piece of glass like someone had faceted glass and then they fused like a layer of garnet over the top, synthetic garnet or synthetic sapphire over the top. Um, so that if you were to test it whilst it was set in the ring, it would test as a garnet or a sapphire or whatever else they wanted it to be on the top, but the bottom bit is glass. And you could see that there was like one layer of really thin red material. And then the bottom was like just blue glass. And it's like, you have to be really, creative of how you look at things how you formulate how you put all your observations together and all of that stuff um, what what <laughs> i can't believe someone being so crafty this is this is why there's so much trust like yeah you know you have to have in 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 the trade and quality assurance to know what is real and you know what is authentic and not and that's why you know when I do like bespoke jewelry and if it's of a certain gemstone or a certain weight, I do get a gemologist um, certificate, you know, because I want people to trust because anyone can just say anything. 
you know, like, yeah. and it's really embarrassing because I'm not a gemologist. People come to me, yeah, I got this like aqua, aqua something. I'm looking at it and it's like glass, but I don't want to say anything. I'm just like, okay, if you say it is yeah. aquamarine, it is, but <laughs> how that light is reflecting and I'm not a gemologist. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, but you know what? Gemology, a lot of it is about just like that, that cool feeling, that kind of intuition. Like there are times when I see something and I know it's not, any like it's not what it's supposed to be but I'll just look at something like that season and it's not because I've looked at it in depth it's not because it's just like a feeling I'm like I feel like that's fake <laughs> it's just a thing but um so yeah, you, you do have to be kind of like crafty with what you do for your observations but I also am just like a creative person anyway like when I grown up I always did like art and I always like did painting and all that stuff um and photography and so I started, uh, what's it, my gemstone Instagram just because I was always taking pictures of gemstones. Mainly started when I was studying just to like memorize what I was looking at, what I was looking for. And then I realized like, I actually quite like taking pictures of gemstones because you never get the same thing in the, in the same type of gemstone. Like, but on your, gem- my- on your um, Instagram, they look so so nice and I'm not saying that you're not professional but what camera do you do you use your normal no, normal phone phone camera or yeah it's my iphone iphone mate <laughs> and do you use a mirror iPhone. as well on the, for the yeah i'll use like i'll use a mirror only because um so i like to like i like to play with like the background and so if you with gemstones it's hard to get enough light into the stone to take a good picture so it's all about it's not even about the camera that you use, it's all about the light um, and the type of light you're using to get different kind of mm-hmm. images. So for example, I was taking pictures of some a sapphire and some garnets. And sometimes like rubies and pink sapphires, they can be a little bit fluorescent and they fluoresce red. So depending on what kind of light you use, it will make the stone look redder or it'll make it like a white light will make it maybe look a bit more purple. So it really depends. You have to like know how that stone is going to react to what light you're putting it under. Oh, so interesting. That's, interesting. That's like, that's the secret of the Instagram. <laughs> and like sometimes, like some stones are pleochroic. So, you know, if you angle it a certain way, you'll see, um, maybe if you had like a bicolor sapphire, if you angle it a certain way, it would look teal, like a uniform teal color. But then you move it and it would look half yellow, half blue. So you just have to know. And that's why I think on my Instagram, I'll do like multiple pictures of the same stone because it's like, depending on how you look at gemstones, they'll always look different. From every single angle, they will look different. This they'll is what I try to tell. Mm-hmm. Hmm? This is what I had a situation where I was making an emerald engagement ring and because it's COVID and stuff and I, as long, long story short, I do like everything virtual, I have a virtual studio now. I used to have a physical studio, but there's no point now. I just want everything, you know, lean, virtual. And what I do, I go to the gem merchants and I'm like, I'll pick out the stones by video and photograph. And I try to show customers like, this is, here it is. I'm like, yeah, but on the internet, it looks more green at emerald. I'm like, that's the internet, that is CAD, that is, they, they Photoshop it to look green yeah. that way. Usually emeralds are not as green as you think they are. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's all about lighting. So I just feel like... I think just- people need to be really aware as well. Like when you're buying jewelry online, a lot of the times the thing that you're looking at is not the actual piece of jewelry. It is literally just a 3D rendering of a piece of jewelry. <laughs> that they will cast and make for you if you order it. Like There are so many places that do that. Like I really, if I go onto a website and I look at the jewelry and it's actual photographs of the pieces, I will trust it hundred percent more than if it was just like a CAD rendering because when you have this like 3D model, you don't know what you're going to get. Like you really don't know what's going to arrive in the post. <laughs> it could be anything, um, but it's, it's really important. Like people think that you need like macro lenses and you need all the stuff i've got iphone xr not even like the latest one just rock with my xr i've got uh sunlight <laughs> that's all sunlight is the best light to take pictures of gemstones and i've got like a loop that i can like attach to the back of my phone it's literally just a loop on a clip and i just put it over my phone camera to get like close-up shots but that's it 
and a little bit of like even when you go onto like some of the dealers pages on Instagram and you see like all these like heavily edited and filtered pictures of gemstones I'm like that just defeats the point like because it's, it's going to be on your hand like an engagement ring that's why sometimes like I ever put like the stone next to my hand or if it's some and someone's in light like I mm. have it in white when or so like gem merchant or the gem dealer whatever just put your finger there and put like a ring so they get the colors because I I don't want when it comes in the post they're like oh I thought it was going to be this color and that color so I'm very honest I show a video and I show a picture and I say look this is mm. how it is I show several different videos <laughs> at different angles so they know okay this is what you're getting because um I feel like doing any bespoke during any you you know I love to manage people's expectations yeah you have because to. <laughs> the internet is wild and I don't and it's not in my interest to sell you something fake it's not in my interest to sell you something bad because I don't want no buyer's remorse I don't yeah. want that in my life I want a peaceful thing I want you to be happy with it and live your life and cherish that thing without it's hard to energy. manage expectations though because like people see stuff on the internet and then, or like, they'll see something like a can rendering at one price on some dodgy website and they'll come and be like, oh, I saw this sapphire ring for this much. Why can't, why is the stone costing me the whole price of the ring? And I'm like, because, you know, the, the internet lies sometimes, <laughs> like at the end of the day. People coming in with these wild, like, requests for stones. And I'm just thinking, that doesn't even exist. Like, I don't even know where you saw that. <laughs> like, it's mad. So you have to kind of just, I do I have to do it every day. Like I kind of have to say like, look, that doesn't exist at that price point or like that doesn't physically exist at all. Yeah. <laughs> price points are hard with budgets, but I really try when doing bespoke stuff just to match, try my best to find people. And, and I'm a person like, I can't do gems or on, on, I can't do gems where it's posted. I'm like, no, I need, I need to see it. I need to mm. physically touch it because even though I do trust people, I need to, that's why, you know, I, I, I take my time and I look at the gem and I check it out so I know I've seen it and touched it. I was going to say to you as well. And you know, you, you know what it is? Like everyone knows or the common person in their life is going to get an engagement ring or something. Like, everyone knows the four C's, right? Or two certain things. Mm. Four C's, diamonds, diamond, diamonds, right? But that's ingrained in our Western society to know about diamonds. But any other, di- any other stone, like an opal or something, I'm lost without a gemologist. I'm lost because... Sorry, I have to think. I was just thinking about recent stuff, but I did an opal engagement ring. Mm. And Australian opal, you know, seen as one of the best opals, but at the same time, a fight, you know, but at the same time, it's like an opal could be two pounds. Yeah. <laughs> and an opal could be yeah. three. Like it could be 20,000 pounds. And yeah. explaining to the customer, like, okay, I know you saw it on Etsy for this much. Yeah. But the grade and the quality of that opal is not the same, not triple A grade fine as this one. And that's why it will cost this much. Yeah. And it's really hard to explain, even when looking at the GIA or GEMA, anything which is not a diamond. Even, it is so even, hard. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're, you're, no, 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 you're 100% hard. right. 100% right. If it's not a diamond, if basically if the GIA feels that they can't grade it in their letter grading, no one's going to know anything about it. Unless it's a diamond, you're not going to find concise, factual, correct information, especially about pricing when it comes to colour gemstones. You're just not going to find it. Because at the end of the day, I think everyone, I'm pretty sure you must know this, but everyone in the jewellery industry knows that uh, the price of things is very fluid. (laughs) It just depends on who you get it from and when at the end of the day, like... And that but goes for diamonds, that think... goes for gemstones, everything. Okay, that's interesting. So we're going off about black um, black creatives, but it's but and it's I'm talking to gemologists, the, the expert who's been lots of years studying it. Because the way how I saw it as a normal jeweler is mm. that gemstones pass so many hands. There's so much in the val- it's so much in in the the value chain. So usually mm. when a gemstone comes to my hand, twenty people probably touch that gemstone and had cut. So it's really frustrating, like. So not frustrated, I used to get frustrated, but as I got more experience as a jeweler, I get less frustrated. I just have to explain, like, when people come to me for usually uh, an engagement ring or something with a gemstone, you're paying for the gemstone. Don't even think about the metal. Don't even think mm. like a jeweler's making a big margin of this thing. Usually what people pay for the, is, is for the gemstone, and that's, 
and I won't even make much money off that to be fair because mm -hmm. I need to be consistent with the internet and blah 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 so it's really like a I'm trying to compete with the internet which is hard to do as a bespoke service because you're making something from, from from scratch and the design process takes forever two you're mm -hmm. handpicking the gemstone make sure the gemstone is good and all that kind of stuff and three, it's, 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 it's just it's just it's just crazy just to uh, may, maybe give give your advice as a gemologist about I mean, I would say, mm -hmm. I would say when it comes to like the price of things, it's very easy for us these days to say, like, I'm cheap, like, I'm so cheap, like, <laughs> I'm, I will save money if I can anywhere, right? But at the end of the day, when you're buying something like jewelry, and if you want to get yourself something nice, and you want something that you're going to like, hold on, even if you're like, I'm not passing this down to nobody, like this is coming to my grave. You wanna buy yourself something nice, you wanna buy something nice for someone else, your best bet is to go down that bespoke route. Because like you're saying, if you buy it off the internet, you don't know who's handled that gemstone. You don't know where it's come from. You don't know if anyone's checked it. You don't know if you're, like we say with the CADs and all the 3D renderings, you don't know what's actually gonna arrive. Whereas, all of the kind of passion you're putting in to just the gemstone part of this bespoke process and then you've got the designer mm -hmm. then you've got the making then you've got the finishing and like the, you, there's so much kind of love and passion put into bespoke jewelry any every jeweler that i've spoken to who offers bespoke services they put so much of their own energy into everything that they make and i feel like that alone makes it worth more than just buying it off the internet like it's it's um I think I said to someone at the uh at the jewelry cut fair that I feel like the jewelry industry definitely needs to go down a more holistic route <laughs> instead of just mean? being so instead of just being so like money grabbing and being so you know I'm just gonna sell this and make a profit and like it's all about margins or that because that's it's it is retail at the end of the day but I think we need to take more of a holistic approach because this is like you know energies and stuff like this is someone think, if someone has put good energy into making something that you're going to have on your skin every day that's something that you've paid your hard-earned money for you know you might as well know that it's come from a good place instead of just some random factory somewhere <laughs> you know yeah, I hear it's you better. I hear you and not to be like on a bigger Debbie Debbie down I don't want I don't I didn't really value until I did more bespoke jewelry and I specialized in it it's like it's being like a little mini architect I'm not saying I, I've studied ar architecture because you have to know the metallurgy you have to know what metals you know you have to mm. use even when you're working with it the metallurgy the melting points all that kind of stuff you have to know the shape you have to you know, like you're building the frame the house or the foundations when I mean, you got to know the stone because sometimes mm. people say I want a coral and I'm just like you can have a coral but it's very porous and you can't yeah. wear it every day, but I want a coral. And I'm just like, are you sure? Yeah, make it. Oh, okay. You don't want a coral. Okay. So it's me. I'm always like, people think, Cassandra, you always give people um, too much information. But I'm, like, I'm giving information at the start when we do this because I don't, I, I'm like, I'd rather we design slow mm. than we get into the metal. Because if, if we rush to do the design, like, oh yeah, just have a solid hair, like most, some people do really want to close the sale. My reputation, I don't have lots of money. I don't have like a rich husband or a rich family in the jewelry industry. I don't have that. So my reputation, my, my referrals are like gold. Pun, mm. pun, you know what I mean? No, and they I just, are. I, and I just don't, I just feel like in this country, I'll give you an example. So I'm going over tangent and it's not my interview, but I'm going to tell when I went to Scandinavia, Scandinavia, three different countries, but when I went to Norway and I went to Copenhagen, um, Denmark, they really revered their Jews. They buy from their jewelers, they know their jewelry designers, and they mm -hmm. appreciate the craft. They celebrate their jewelers. And I see it when they go to the shops. People, when I when I saw silver, silver bed jewelry is just as much as gold jewelry. It's not about the 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 price of jewelry, it's about the craft, you know, like mm -hmm. love, love their design. They pay just as much as sometimes gold, um, so, so silver, just as much as um as gold. And I'm thinking in, in Britain, it's like sometimes price conscious, or maybe I need to find more people. And I am slowly through these years find more people who appreciate the craft, appreciate the concepts. Mm. I, I just feel like, and also people don't know in the industry, for, for jewelry, it's not just one thing. It's like you're the, you're the scientist, like you're the scientist of the gems to make sure these gems are authentic or give the information about the gems. 
and then there's might be a polisher and then there might be yeah. uh, you're coming onto you coming on onto your list and then there might be you know there's so much different specialisms people would not believe the amount of hands that need to touch one item of jewelry because like for me as well like I came into this more like I said on the science background and I just thought like jewelers just did the whole thing like you you get the stone and like I assume all jewelers would know at least a little bit about gemstones or would know how to polish or know how to do there are people who literally just mount I do mounting that's my thing or like people who just make chains or people who just polish and it's like a full chain of hands and there's something quite nice about that. There's something, when you're in that industry, there's something very kind of like, I don't know, camaraderie. Like everyone's working together to make one thing. <laughs> Just like all these different pieces of a puzzle. So, and everyone's got like the same goal because I'd say in the jewelry industry, um, a lot of people are very passionate about what they do. Like you'd, you'd be like, how is it that, you know, someone can sit and just put stones in holes all day? right but you have to be a very passionate person and to like to be able to do that and to be able to do that at a really high standard and a really high level and be so proud of what you're doing it makes every step of that chain accountable like if the polisher doesn't do well on polishing those stones that the setter just set he's vexed he's gonna be vexed <laughs> and I've seen it happen it's hilarious but it's just one of those things it's there's so many people that are involved in making your jewelry that you might as well just pay a little and bespoke isn't even that expensive let's be honest like you might as well just pay a little bit more you're going to pay less than tiffany's or cartier or whatever anyway for a better piece you might as well go bespoke you know because the person if you go to a certain high street store the sale associate they don't know anything all right they don't know anything they they, they might do (laughs) oh let me let me just cover my cover myself they might do they might might be judah but but, they know how to sell which is like there are some great salespeople in the jewelry industry because you have to ask people to part with quite a lot of money you know um so yeah they know how to sell and i'm not saying they don't know anything but if you asked yeah i'm like oh i know what tons of people in sales people like you said (laughs) No, but I mean, like maybe, maybe, I'm of, um, maybe I'm thinking of the high, the high street. Because when I go in and look in, like I said, yeah. I don't want to say their name, certain high street mall kind of jeweler, and you ask them about stuff, they just just reel off the same thing, four C's, four C's, and it's like we could just print that off off the internet. So why is this oh, like oh, halo, oh, halo, oh, halo? Oh, and I was like, okay, but there's more than a halo and a solitaire or a trilogy. So why why is that one better? Why is it? They couldn't tell me. So I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking to myself as a jeweler, I'm like, I'm how much information and knowledge I'm dropping on these like people and you mm. couldn't say that and you, you can't get I'm not trying to big up <sighs> objectivity buy your jewelry where you want there's pros there's cons to everything the end okay cool so I want to get onto your list explain <laughs> why the list segue explain the lovely list why did you do the list what spot that on yeah um so the list also small small correction the list isn't at 375 it's at like 320 something at the moment oh. but everybody I don't know why someone wrote somewhere that was 375 and now everyone thinks that but I mean I wish 300 we'll, we'll odd 300 plus 300 plus well over 300 is all good um so yeah I basically because I had all these pictures of gemstones um I wanted to kind of like do a blog of some sort um and then lockdown came in, like I kind of started it, but I didn't really put a lot of energy into it. Then lockdown came down and I was like, okay, I have all this time. I might as well like make this blog. Then I was like, what do I blog about? And I was like, well, jewelry and I'm black. So maybe black jewelers. And then I went to go research some black jewelers to talk about my blog. And then I realized that like the same 12 names were just coming up over and over and over and over again. And I'm thinking there has to be more than 12 black people globally on Google, you know. I just went to Google because like, that's where you go for everything. Um, but yeah, I just kept finding the same names over and over again. So I wrote their names down and then I thought, well, there has to be more. Um, so the blog kind of took a backseat and I just kept trying to like, find black jewelers to kind of talk about um and then obviously that summer uh BLM kicks off 
everyone was like all of these names are coming to the surface then obviously you did your um open letter and then a lot more names are coming to the surface so I was like just in the background like just collecting names being like I didn't really have any kind of um plan <laughs> for what I was going to do with all of these people but I was just like I was just amazed at the lack of information and the lack of data that was on black people who make jewelry because there's so much data and so much information on white people who do jewelry like or any other race who does jewelry um and not very much information just on like black jewelers in general like over the course of history or black jewelry in general so I just thought you know I'll just keep collecting these names all these people will come to the surface and then it just kind of I don't know it took off from there um, so now it's basically like a directory of black jewelers. If you want to buy black for whatever occasion and you want to buy jewelry, you can go to the list and you'll definitely find a jeweler in your area or in your country at the very least. Um, at any price point, all different types of jewelers. Um, also, if you were like, because I didn't want to limit it to just people who make jewelry so there's gemologists there's polishers there's people who work in media there's jewelry marketers jewelry writers because like we were saying before it's not a one-man band like it takes a lot of different people to make this industry go around and there are lots of black people who are part of this so every if you work in jewelry in any capacity you'll be on the list <laughs> i just think it's just a great resource because i don't know any i didn't know probably knew one black jeweler before a year ago and it's just great to see different people and it just feels like you're not alone and we can share different experiences and because the industry there's so much barriers and, and it's sometimes really hard to say the nuances because obviously money for any business like where, what crew you are marketing money staff problems those are universal things what happen in business or problems but there's certain things if something's not right when you go to study at a certain institution or if you apply for a job or the way how you're treated compared to your white counterparts in a very systematic similar way and there's a theme about it mm. there's something wrong or if you go to an exhibition how people treat your exhibition or, or with stuff there's something wrong something wrong you know yeah. so i just want to say that not looking for handouts not saying that we're not supposed to have any troubles you know no one business but there's something when there's a certain thing what happens and um yeah so it's very comforting to see that list and to know that there's other people in this industry who i never even honestly like i didn't it never crossed my mind until um like obviously it crossed my mind like i'll be in hatton garden my first gemology job was in Hatton Garden I clocked that there were like no black people and I just thought it was really weird because we are in London like <laughs> you walk down to Farringdon there's loads of us and then you come up one street and there's no one around so I thought um but you just never saw anyone on the street um and I don't know I I must have noticed it before and just didn't really think too much about it and then it wasn't until I tried to go find black jewelers I was like wait a second like it's actually really weird. Um, but I think for myself, like the best bit was like going through, um, finding all these different people in the jewelry industry. And I was like, I haven't come across a gemologist yet. Like, I was like, we're the black gemologists. There must be someone, there must be someone. And then I found Adrian. I think everyone in the jewelry industry knows Adrian. So she's a gemologist in the US. And I was like, yo, okay, now I feel like, I found I'm not There's the only two. one. <laughs> There's two of us. <laughs> There's two. And the only thing that separates us is the Atlantic Ocean. Like we out here, we out here. But then I kept finding more and more and more. And I was like, yo, the black girls are doing bits in gemology. So we got this. Like now I have like random people like on LinkedIn, like black gemologists, yo. <laughs> so it's kind of it's been reassuring because it's a difficult thing to study. It's a difficult like, thing, like a difficult career to get into and get jobs. And then when you're in the jobs, it's difficult because you're black. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, so it's not. all about the trust thing. It's, it's a trust thing, you know, getting a trade reference, getting people to serve you diamonds, getting people to leave you alone to get APRA or memos. People don't know what APRA or memos is like in the jewelry trade, it's all about trust and credit sometimes. So sometimes, like, if I want to show a customer a diamond or a certain gemstone, I haven't got. Unless the, you know, lots and lots of, if the people are just speculative, I'm going for a meeting or appointment, 
I usually show them the stone and that usually helps the self so people can see the stone right but people have to trust like gives you thousands of pounds yeah. of stones <laughs> you leave without paying these thousands of pounds of stones you show it to your customer you and then you take it back weeks or months later Nova Industry will let you lend these thousands of pounds of jewelry. It's, of, 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 it's crazy. You 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 it's wouldn't so think that. Crazy. I I didn't even know about Afro. Like I didn't I didn't know anything about Afro, and I some like the first time I ever did kind of like a private commission or anything like that. it was something super super simple. Like this guy I knew was like, I just need an engagement ring. Like I just need a quick one. <laughs> like cheap. <laughs> Let's do it. And I was thinking, how am I gonna get a stone to show him and you just go to like your stone dealer and you say can I borrow this and they're like yeah bring it back in 20 days and I'm like 20 days <laughs> like if someone asked to borrow my coat I'll be like I need that back in an hour <laughs> like, there is no way but yeah it's just a thing so but I think what was it I was talking to someone one of the black guys in Hatton Garden who was it I think it might have been Chiefer. And I remember him telling me about this other guy who's very well known in the garden. And he was telling me how, like, when he first started out, he had a bit of a hard time because people wouldn't even sell him diamonds, let alone Afro. So I'm like, okay, we've come a long way because I can borrow stuff. But we haven't actually come that far. Like, people were fully given this guy. He's not even old. Like, he's probably, like, a few years older than us. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking, when you first started out, people are refusing to sell you diamonds because you're black that's crazy like it's actually crazy this isn't you know the 40s <laughs> no no it's recent I remember when I, no I, I remember when I first started when I you know sometimes you know to, for trade people when you go to pick your stones they they give you the tray and then you can pick and you can do what you need to do to see what stones you need they will watch me the, they will hold the tray they wouldn't let me touch a stone that's how bad it was. Or oh, was one, I remember one store in Hatton Garden, like but they thought I was stealing. I was not. I, and it, you know, you know, you know, you know what stone it was? It was like a little moonstone for eight pounds. So you think I'm gonna I'm going to ruin my reputation mm-hmm. as the only it's black girl moonstone. or the black woman who comes to this store over an eight pound moonstone, a crappy moonstone. Right. You think I'm stealing the moonstone? And when she knew that I didn't even touch the moon, so I'll steal it, she was like, she didn't even say sorry. So I'm just like, you know what? So it was just like, and that, and some people say that, like, I don't know about me, that like, I get less anxious. But at first I was so anxious going to a shop. I, I make sure I don't have my bag, I don't have my toolbox. I'm like, I'm not stealing. I just want this. <laughs> Everyone see me. I'm I'm, my hands are here. I'm not <laughs> teeth in anything. And I'm just, just like, like I smiling shouldn't. for no reason. Like, don't worry, I'm not stealing. <laughs> Oh. Well, you know what I mean? These are the these are the subtleties of like when you are in the jewelry trade where you can't have even access to certain things because people think that like, you are dodgy and you are stealing and you're and just it's mad. Not. It's mad because like you see you see how especially being a gemologist like obviously this is probably gonna break <laughs> probably gonna break a lot of people's preconceptions of jewelry industry but like you see how people handle these materials they handle how they handle the gold how much it actually costs how they just like how diamonds are just kind of like handled around it's you would think that it was just like beans you know but like oh you want some beans you want to borrow my beans yeah cool whatever it's calm like it's chill you see how relaxed they are everyone else is about handing over thousands of pounds worth of diamonds on a daily basis and you go in with your genuine intent to go look at some stones to try and sell like everyone else is doing and they want to give you like the third degree and I'm like I'm sorry I can literally see you doing it in front of me what's going on here and yeah it's it's bad it's mad the subtle I think the kind of issues with race is very subtle like how they present themselves in the jewelry industry, but it's definitely, definitely there. And it's very interesting because Han Garden is a melting pot of all different ethnicities. Like it's so, it's weirdly diverse, you know, but you can definitely see some sort of pecking order within that diversity, which is annoying because half of that stuff is coming from Africa anyway. <laughs> So let us not pretend like, you know, the divers just fell from the British sky. 
they did not like it's a joke but you know what it is what it is like I feel like the first step to kind of addressing it is to collect the data like again coming from that science background you got to collect the data and once you have the data we can figure out what's going on make some observations and do something about it like but you can't make a change if you don't know what you need to change you know what I mean so in my like ideal situation how lit would it be if there was a gemstone dealer that had people selling you gemstones that didn't racially profile you like it's not even you know it shouldn't even be that far-fetched of an idea but I've seen with my own eyes people that I've worked with how they approach people of different ethnicities and how black people are spoken to when they come in to get a service or to buy something and the kind of levels of suspicion. And I'm there like, why are you doing this? I'm literally sat right next to you. Like, <laughs> it's weird. It's a weird one. I don't know. It's a weird yeah. one. So on, on, on a positive note that we are, you know, people <laughs> are, are, are succeeding or, or trying or doing their thing in the field um and i just want to say um ask you just a few more questions so what mm -hmm. advice no actually let me start with this one so obviously we talked about covid a lot you did a lot of things so in in the lockdown period so what was your light bulb moment what you realized to transform your life and what you did i know it's it could be the blog or it could be the um the list but what else have you done which was a light bulb moment for you um Let's see. Uh, I'm going to say the last couple of years, like career-wise, have been very interesting, to say the least. Um, but I think the most valuable thing that I learned this year is the value of my, like my actual value as a gemologist, my time. Um, I did, I was kind of like, not between jobs, but like kind of between jobs. And my mentor had set me up. There's a thing where like gemologists often act as people's eyes. So say if you were saying you don't like to buy gemstones if you can't see them, right? This is something that happens with like lots of antique dealers and gemstone dealers. They can't be everywhere at the same time because all these like shows and the deal, this is like a very international kind of field, right? So it's very common for some dealers and some people to have gemologists in different locations who can who they trust. They're like, I trust your eyes to tell me that this is legit or check it for me or tell me if you like it, blah, blah, blah. So I did my first one of those, just like, just to see, cause I'm like at the point in my career, I'm like, I've got my qualifications, I've got some experience. I need to figure out exactly what I want, where I want to take this. And I had a really, really, it was like one of like the best days of work that I've ever done. And it only took three hours. <laughs> and I got paid more than I would have got paid if I went to work for eight hours. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. Like, what have I been doing? <laughs> and I was just like, I had a really good time. Like, I got to use my gemological knowledge. I got to use my creativity because I had to send photos and, um, like it's something that I'm quite passionate about, just like the photography aspects. So I got to like do a bit of that, you know, look at some really nice items, things that you wouldn't like actually see every day. Um, and not only just items of jewelry, like there was a Cartier gold makeup box with like, di like, why does that exist? I don't know, but I got to look at it and I got to hold it and I was really happy about it. <laughs> Checked it over and then, to know that you can get paid quite well to do that. And even though it was just a one-off thing, I'm like, okay, and that's put things in a little bit more perspective about where I want to take this or where I want to go. Um, because at the end of the day, like the, if you're thinking of doing the gemological uh, qualification, it's not cheap. Like it's it really not, not cheap. cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. And like the the gem A one is cheaper than the GIA. Uh, I, went, I went to New York and someone told me that they wanted fifteen k for three months worth of study. Are you mad? I no. know, I know that. I was like, oh, GIA, G I A, and I was like, what, fifteen grand? No, 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 no. Not this in it. Not this in. Not this in them. But it's not GIA. Like I saw their textbook. It was very thorough. Like it was, it's a good textbook. But at the end of the day. We spend 9k a year on university to get a degree. 
What are you talking about? 15K for three months is too It's much. not a degree. It's, 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 it's a de- not to take anything away from the studies. It's, a it's not a degree. It's a diploma. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> like, 27K, I'm done. I have an actual BSc. It's crazy. I just, it's I can't weird not- with the arts, though, because I think when I studied jewellery at Holtz Academy, now BJA, I think I spent like six grand on a on a diploma, which is like lower than a HND. So it's like in between an A level. And like like a in, it's like it's, it's like there's foundation, there's degree, foundation degree, there's HND, and then there's A level, and it was in the middle. And I'm like, oh, and then I did I did, I did, did a master's X amount of years ago, and it was like five five grand. And I'm just like, Ugh. comparisons, it's isn't so- it? It's, it's just weird how people price education. It's it's the like, do you know what I think it is? Genuinely, I think it's almost like a financial barrier, you know, because only certain people are going to be able to afford that, and only certain people would be inclined to do that anyway. So, like, say with gemology, you're only going to get people whose family have been in jewelry and have made money off jewellery and their kids now have an interest in jewellery and they have the money to go do that like you know what I mean like that's what usually what you get or people who are like middle-aged who will fancy a career change and they've saved up money over you know their working life and they can do that but say if it wasn't for like me having to work the whole time or like if it wasn't for my parents being very very supportive like I wouldn't have been able to do that qualification do I think it's worth what we paid no (laughs) no like I learned way more and was given way much like a lot more access and opportunity for my 9k a year to go and do a geology degree than the 10k or whatever it costs to do the foundation at GMA and it's like a have like a higher level but I think it is just something that prevents people who they don't want to join in from joining in same with any kind of professional qualification at the end of the day like let's be honest most people if they go for like a cfa or something their company pays for it like it's you know is what it is i think it's just a bit gatekeeping that the industry does there's 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 access there's barriers there's barriers because you know what like gemology is not hard like practically it's not hard anyone can do it if I I could sit down with you in like an afternoon and show you exactly what I look for and like point it out to you and you'll know what to look for and you're gemologist now (laughs) it's not hard it's just paying for that piece of paper that proof that you know you can trust me which that in itself goes a long way in the industry so it is worth getting it but just you know don't let if you can't afford it don't let it put you off like you can always start small you don't need a lot of equipment really to do it you just need some good eyes a good light and a loop <laughs> and now everyone's gonna know that you can just borrow the secret to like <laughs> we know why all these gemologist courses go down because you said if you don't I need to do any i'm just messing okay, don't even cool. need to do it <laughs> okay I have no, two more it's... questions before we go. So what yeah. does, uh, probably obvious, no, probably too, well, okay. What does jewellery mean to you? I know what gemstones mean to you, but what does jewellery mean to you? Oh, um, I don't know. Jewellery's just like always been like part of my life. Like, I think jewellery is just mainly, it's like, I don't know. It can bring like, it's just memories is what's coming up in my head. Like, I can, I always remember my mom's ring. I remember my granddad's chain. You always have like a chain with like mm. some pendant on it. I remember my auntie's pendant. She's got like a gold world, like globe. I remember that from like childhood. Like I've always just been around jewelry. Um, but I think it's just something that is um, a very kind of personal way to kind of, not, ex- I don't want to say express yourself because it's very like cliche, but just a very personal way to kind of adorn yourself and kind of say, this is what I'm about, you know? Um, and it's something that can be so personal and so 
in the same way that gemstones look completely different depending on what angle you look at them mm. or depending on what light it's in a ring I my rings will look completely different if you wore them because you probably put them on different fingers or they would fit different fingers in different ways and styling the way how it mm-hmm. And so there's so many different ways that you can wear jewelry, even even if it's like something basic, like <laughs> I've got these like two silver bracelets, right? Nothing too expensive, nothing expensive at all. Two bracelets. And like one day I used to wear them separate. One day I was just playing around with them and I kind of linked them together. And I was like, oh, now it's a long bracelet. And just, you know, like just really weird stuff like that. You can just do whatever you want and express your I don't know however you want your body to glisten um I need to glisten yeah. I'm taking that from you I'm taking that thank you <laughs> my body thank glistening body. I love it I love it I think as well like one of the things people don't really take into account is that kind of personal kind of connection because for me I'm one of those people that if I put jewelry on I'm not taking it off like all my jewelry <laughs> this this is me 24 7 i go to bed in it shower in it i go for a what? swim all my jewelry on you everything. know what you know what to do with do, do you have gems in it though yeah yeah i i know i know i know come on gemologist come on come on um i know ju- jewelry you know care what? product care one, what, 101 look i have been te- well, i'll do a little plug i've been <laughs> testing out <laughs> so i had um, there's a girl, Jade, Jewelry by Jade, she's on the Oi. list, and then and, uh, Image Gang, she's on the list as well. So I bought this, uh, my pendant, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's like a little L charm, right? Yeah, yeah. And then this necklace is by Jewelry by Jade. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you I have swum in this chlorine multiple times a week, showered, been out in the sun, perfume, everything, the, the, nothing has nothing has defeated these chains these necklaces right is it is, is, is it gold so, gold the may or real gold or so i think this one's gold i think do you know what? i think the jewelry by jade necklace i think is 14k gold plated but i'm pretty sure the charm is just brass i'm pretty sure like i bought it it was 10 pounds i was like it's cute i'm gonna get that uh support my fellow black jewelers and everything um but it hasn't faded. It hasn't done anything. It hasn't discolored. Not a single stain, scratch, nothing. So I'm like, I will keep wearing my jewelry, doing whatever I want in my jewelry until my jewelry tells me to stop. Until and then it turns black. But we're not, we're not saying that we want it to be golden. We wanted to keep it that way. We wanted to keep it safe and secure. But as someone who knows better, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing what I'm supposed Don't do to do. Don't do what I do. Okay, I get you. I don't know. Okay. Maybe, maybe we're just out here making jewelry different because these there's no tarnish. There's nothing. It's good quality. There you go. Quality. There you go. Quality. Okay. Great. You, there you go. It's the energy. That's what it is. It's that bespoke energy. You put some good energy in it. It's not going to tarnish. <laughs> Done. Okay, I, I'll, I'll take that. And um, the other question I want to ask you quickly is, uh, what advice do you have for Black creatives, whatever creative industry, what they do? One piece of advice. Um, I'm going to tell them what what I told you last time I saw you. Um, whatever you want to do, just do it. I know that sounds like it's a lot easier said than done. Trust me, Mike no. said it lots of times. No. Like, you know, there's not enough hours in the day to just do whatever you want. But mm-hmm. whatever you want to do, just do it. Like, I've, this year, I've met lots of Black creatives, lots of people doing all sorts of stuff, like all sorts of stuff, writers, poets, uh, musicians, like, obviously, my fellow Black jewelers, documentary makers. Um, and a lot of the time, it's almost like I feel like people we're kind of waiting for someone else's validation or waiting for another organization to say, yo, yeah, we can, we can do that. We can give you some money to do that. Bun that, like do your own thing. If you don't think that your opinion piece is going to be taken up by the guardian because of your color, start your own newspaper. Like if you don't think for us, like I was saying, we feel like we can't go to, we can't comfortably go and buy diamonds without being racially profiled. New di- new diamond dealer is black now. Like, <laughs> just whatever it is that you want to do, don't let anyone or anybody 
organization or whatever mindset whatever standing away if you feel that you have something that you would like to share whether it be creatively or not share it put it out there there's always going to be people who want to gobble it all up but just I don't know you got to stand strong (laughs) whatever you want to do just do it it's worth it because if not it's just a bit long (laughs) she's just working for other people it's long it is long okay I get you (laughs) I get you okay and my last one I promise the last one is about when we finish the podcast I always like to say something positive what people have said about you best testimonial as a gemologist or in your creative endeavors so what has someone said about your services as a gemologist one of the best pieces of feedback oh um I think the best feedback, the one that touched me the most was when I was working at the lab, this black guy came in and I was straight away, like, because I started the list at that point. So I was like, black guy, what are you doing here? We buy in. Like, he probably thought I was like being shady, but I'm like, what are you actually doing? Because I might want to add you to the list. Um, I we started chatting about, he brought this like Ruby in and he gave me something. He's like, can you do me a favor and take a picture and do your lights? Um, because it was better lights in the lab of the stone. So I was like, yeah, sure, of course. Took the picture. Well, hold on, hold on. What, is, what, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? So like the, in the lab, you just have like good lighting. So you can just to take probably, pictures. Okay, great. Yeah, you can okay. probably, because when you're looking at gemstones, you need good light. You need good lighting. Fair enough. I just, I just wanted you just to make everyone aware, but okay, got you. Yeah. Um, so I took these pictures, just like took them in the way that I would always like take pictures of gemstones, sent it to him. And then we kind of like started like a bit of like a, like a friendship kind of thing. And he turned out to be like this guy, like just dabbles in gemstone dealing. He had, his uncle gave him the passion back in the day, took him to Cookson's. And so we had like a nice chat about gemstones. And he said to me that he was like, I could tell, I can tell that you're a good gemologist based on the way that you take pictures of gemstones. And I was just like, that is the ultimate compliment for me personally, because it had nothing to do with the grading, it had nothing to do with the result of what the stone was or anything I said to him about the stone. It was just, I think he could see how I see gemstones and he picked that up and he was like, nah, you're legit. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> It's got more than my diploma. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom for my dad. <laughs> but, uh, that was, that's probably the nicest thing anyone said to me. And we're friends to this day. I was like, cool. <laughs> oh, that is so great. So how can we find you and the list and all your creative and gemstones endeavours? Um, well, you can follow me on Instagram. It's the awkward handle, but bear with me, guys. It's we'll, we'll, at yeah. you. Will, yeah, we'll put it in my like show box, notes mm-hmm. box somewhere here or something like that. Um, at T X N T I M X S. It's ten times the easy X's. If you can't find me there, you can find me on at Bailey from Bermuda. Um, Bailey like the drink, Bermuda like the country. Easy. Um, where else the 10 times.com is where the list is hosted so if you do the 10 times.com forward slash the dash list it'll take you straight there you can search by name um so if you want to see if someone that you know is on the list who should be on the list make sure you go and check if they're not on there hit me up i will add them it is free mm-hmm. free advertising for anyone who works in the jewelry industry um if not you know, I'm usually in Hatton Garden. <laughs> so if you see me, say hi. I'm friendly, I think. Um, but yeah, I think that's... Oh, LinkedIn, if anyone. You know, build your network in that. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Use our free resources to network and go on. Exactly. Get the work. I, did, I, I didn't make it up, but I heard it and it sounded nice. <laughs> Squeeze it in there like a gem. Lynch. and i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a little self plug as well go ahead go ahead if anyone is interested in the visual arts digital art portraiture stuff like that also in lockdown i started like properly getting back into my art into my drawing so i've got another instagram i promise i'm not like crazy social media person i didn't know this i didn't know this 
Oh yeah. Um, so that one is at melanin dot activated. My friend gave me the name. I was like, that's hilarious, isn't it? So I often just post like random pictures that I've drawn. Getting into like more abstract stuff now, mark making and stuff like that. So if you like visual what? arts, what making? Hmm? Model making? Mark- no. Mark making, you know, I just weird make like marks and textures and just see what happens with it. <laughs> you know, the usual, like just throwing it back to GCSE art and see what happens. But yeah, I also do like a bit of digital art on the side. Um, so if you want to just bless your feed with something nice, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Black creative. So this is the black creative handbook, blessing yeah. you with creative knowledge inspiration encouragement to do your things even though we're sometimes against the odds but we can overcome them but that's what we've been doing mm-hmm. forever so yeah um please support uh leslie and her creative endeavors please support the podcast mm-hmm. if you want to support me just it doesn't hurt for a like a comment review buy some jewelry mm-hmm. once in a while just you know anything keep it going keep the you know the just keep it going um so i really appreciate everything so thank you so much thank you for having me